Welcome to Searching the Scriptures. Our Bible teacher will be Gunther von Haringa Sr. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good evening and welcome to Searching the Scriptures. This is going to be Thine Only Son Isaac, Part 21. And I'll go ahead and read Genesis 22, 1 through 18. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt or test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of Jehovah called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of Jehovah, it shall be seen. And the angel of Jehovah called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith Jehovah, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. We are down to verse 15 which states, And the angel of Jehovah called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Previously, we discovered that the title, the angel or messenger of Jehovah, is actually referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who is also called the messenger of the covenant, for example, in Malachi 3.1, where the same word for angel is rendered messenger. And this particular word is Strong's number 4397. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith Jehovah of hosts. And in Genesis 22, uh, 11 through 12, we also read, And the angel of Jehovah called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. In verses 15 through 18, God recapitulates his promises to Abraham and to his seed, with a capital S, pointing ultimately to Christ, whom Isaac typifies. And the angel of Jehovah called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith Jehovah, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Uh, Since we've discussed the verses in which the two words called and out of heaven, in an earlier lesson, I won't go over that information again. However, in the beginning of verse 16, we find two terms, and said, along with by myself have I sworn. Uh, And said is Strong's number 559, and by myself have I sworn is 7650, which is significant because God is again reinforcing the trustworthiness of his word by reiterating his oath to Abraham uh, as the father of all the elect. And so the elect are in view, but at the same time, so is Isaac. And Isaac, again, uh, represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is to the Lord Jesus Christ that the promises are first made to and said, By myself have I sworn, saith Jehovah, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Before looking at some of the scriptures in which these two words are found together, I would like us to recall what we read in Hebrews 6, 11 through 20, concerning God taking an oath. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation 
is to them an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The, we do find some additional examples of how God repeats uh, his promise to Abraham and to his seed with a capital S, uh, meaning that it's, it's being directed to Christ. Uh, as we read in Galatians, uh, in Genesis 24, 7, we find this uh, declaration, Jehovah God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. Uh, these were the instructions that Abraham gave to his uh, most uh, trusted servant, the one that was in charge of his whole house, to find a wife uh, which uh, we know is going to be uh, Rebecca, uh, for his son Isaac. Here unto me and that swear is 7650, and unto me saying is uh, 559. Uh, likewise, in Exodus 32:13, we find this uh, recorded, remember Isaac, excuse me, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidst unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. To whom thou swearest, again, is 7650, that I have spoken, is 559. Uh, furthermore, uh, Moses reminds his successor, Joshua, of this same promise in Deuteronomy 31, 23. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, Be strong and of a good courage. For thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. Uh, lastly, this idea is also emphasized in verse 5 of Jeremiah 11, 1 through 5. The word that came to Jeremiah from Jehovah, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant. And speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and say thou unto them, Thus saith Jehovah, God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do them, according to all which I command you. So shall ye be my people, and I will be your God, that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. Then answered I and said, so be it, O Jehovah. In 
uh, verse 16 of Genesis 22, the phrase, and said by myself have I sworn, is followed by the phrase, saith uh, Jehovah, which is comprised of two different words altogether and serves to further underscore the utter dependability of all of God's divine pronouncements. Uh, the next phrase before us is, for because thou hast done this thing. Consider for a moment the term this thing, which is the Hebrew word dabar, uh, normally translated word. It's Strong's number 1697, and it's found very close to 1300 times in the Old Testament, where it is rendered in the majority of cases as word or thing. A case in point, from time to time, I will mention the very important uh, uh, Bible study principle that God both hides as well as reveals truth in the Word of God uh, as we learn from Proverbs 25 two. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. This is a thing is debar. Uh, but the honor of kings, who are believers, is to search out a matter. And again, a matter is the same word. It's Debar, 1697. Uh, and we could, uh, with this in mind, we could effectively and legitimately translate this verse as, it is the glory of God to conceal a word, but the honor of kings uh, is to search out a word. And this is exactly what we're commanded to do in Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Uh, this is the attitude that we need to have every time we approach the Bible praying that indeed God would open our spiritual eyes and ears to his word because his word is a parable and it's very difficult and in fact it's impossible to understand unless God in his mercy opens our spiritual ears and eyes and wonderfully he has done so <clears throat> really incredibly so uh, over the past uh, 28 29 years uh, in particular, uh, since the little book was opened at the beginning of the Great Tribulation period and the, su the seals were loosed, uh, as we read in uh, Revelation 5.5. 5. Now, another interesting passage uh, which uh, utilizes uh, this uh, expression, uh, debar, is also found in Genesis 15, one to seven. And the, in the historical context, it's also related to the promises that God gave to Abraham following his encounter with the great high priest Melchizedek, who of course is a type, who actually is the Lord Jesus Christ himself uh, in human form. Uh, let's see, um, after these things, the word of Jehovah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of Jehovah came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, or number the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in Jehovah, 
and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, we have to be very careful with this phrase, and he, this is God, counted it, this is uh, Christ, <clears throat> to him, to Abraham, for righteousness, because we know that the only righteousness or the only righteous one is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he has to uh, give his faith or his righteousness to each one of his elect, to those for whom he made atonement for uh, prior to the foundation of the world. Uh, he is our righteousness. He is our faith. After we become saved uh, during the day of salvation, then we also are given the nine fruit of the Spirit, and one of those fruits is f faith. But in terms of salvation, it has to be God imparting or bequeathing his personal faith uh, to one of his elect at some point. He had to apply that salvation to the soul of one of his elect during their physical lifetime. Uh, verse 7, And he said unto him, I am Jehovah, that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees, to give this land to inherit it. Uh, in verse 1, the first occurrence of Debar is translated after these things, uh, indicating that what is about to be described next follows the encounter with Melchizedek. The second usage of Debar in verse 1 is rendered the word of Jehovah. And in verse 3, Debar again is translated as such, and behold, the word of Jehovah. And again, this is, I think, significant because we find a doubling up here. After these things, the word of Jehovah. Uh, and maybe this is uh, a reference to the fact that just as Moses struck the rock twice, uh, we have uh, a picture, again, of, of God making the point, uh, because this has to do with the promises of God to the seed with a capital S. And we know that God is, is highlighting the fact that Christ was slain twice. Uh, once in 33 AD in the demonstration, and then previously before the foundation of the world, when he was atoning for sin, he was slain. And at that point, uh, all of the elect were in Christ. Uh, now, there's another uh, thing I want to mention, and that is that Abraham, as we know, was asked to sacrifice his heir. This is the son of promise, or Isaac, that God had given to him and to Sarah, and he willingly complied by God's grace trusting altogether that God was orchestrating these events in his life for his own spiritual good and always for God's glory. Uh, these two main words that we find in Genesis 22:16 and has not withheld, uh, we also saw in verse 12. And has not is 38:08 and withheld is 2820. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And curiously, these two terms are also found in one other place. This is in Genesis 39.9 the account in which Joseph responds to the advances of his employer's wife. And this would be Potiphar's wife. And in this case, Joseph was acting honorably and in a God-glorifying manner. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither, that's 3808, hath he kept back, 2820, anything from me but thee. 
because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Uh, as I mentioned initially when this series began, the last phrase in Genesis 22:12, thy son, thine only son from me, crops up in verses 2 and 16 as well, highlighting again and again that Isaac was Abraham's only begotten son, the son of promise, and that he loved him dearly goes without saying. And uh, let's just uh, uh, also keep in mind that uh, the parallel here between Christ and Isaac is unmistakable, as we have discovered throughout this series. And again, we are just dumbstruck in wonder and in gratitude and awe and fear uh, as we see this tremendous historical parable being uh, fleshed out uh, during the time of Abraham. And as I said uh, previously, this is on Mount Moriah, the same place where the plague was stopped uh, during, during the days of David, the same exact place where God told him, build an altar here uh, after the plague was stopped. And that altar was the same place where the foundation of the temple was laid. And fast forwarding uh, to 33 AD, where Christ hung on the cross. And so it is just uh, marvelous how God has woven all these things uh, into the scriptures, into this very location. And, and so, uh, you know, we can only exclaim like what we read in Micah 7, 18 to 20, so powerfully affirms, who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again, he will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Thank you for joining us today for Searching the Scriptures. Until next time, to God be the glory.